You hate ads, I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this channel ad-free. <laughs> Hello folks, welcome to Inkdependence. I'm Mike, and this is a Kaveco original. And also this is a Kaveco original. These two pens came to me from Anderson Pens, so thank you very much Anderson Pens for sending these out for review. And also I'm going to be giving these two pens away courtesy of Anderson Pens. So if you're viewing this close to the time I upload it, look down in the description and see how to enter to win one of these two pens. Uh, all right, so we'll take a look at those in just a sec. Firstly, uh, the box that it comes in, it comes in this nice sleeve. And then it also comes in this uh, very nice presentation box with a whole bunch of Kavecos seals on it, which I think is pretty nice. You've got some Kaveco brand information down there. Open it up and you have a, uh, a variety of ways to store these. And that's because these pens are like different lengths. And I guess you could store, I guess you could store two pens in here. Yeah, you can store two. I don't know why there's this one. Oh, I guess if it's just a single pen, you put it across and then it doesn't rattle around as much. I guess that's the deal. You also have a dummy cartridge and a regular ink cartridge there that came in the barrel. And I stuck a post-it note in there saying small nib because I didn't want to forget which one was which, but they have different nibs. I don't know why I forgot about that, but like whatever. All right, so let's take a look at these two pens. Now, these two pens are called the Kaveco Original and there is actually a third, which is a ballpoint. I don't have that one. I only have the fountain pen versions. And while it's the Kaveco original, that makes me think that it's going to be the original pen that Kaveco made, but that's not what this is. It's just uh, a pen that uses their kind of original styling language, I think, is what they're going for with these. And that is the kind of language that you'll find on, say, the Kaveco Sport, which was the very first Kaveco I had. Not this one. My, my first one was a clear one, and it is scratched up and stained and grungy. This one is a little bit more attractive. But you can see the same kind of de design language going on here with the faceted cap and all that jazz. Pretty nice. And then this one, uh, since it's a pocket pen, you post it on there and it becomes a full-size pen. These are full-sized all on their own. And as you can see that capped, they are essentially the same length as the, uh, the original like Kaveco sport pen here. We'll set that one aside. Let's take a look at the smaller one first, I suppose. This is the 060 Kaveco original. The other one is the 250. The numbers, I think, <laughs> That's not the best way to name these pens, if you're asking me, but it refers to the size of the nib. So as you can see, these pens are the same length when they are closed, and they're gonna be the same length when they're open as well, which I think is actually a very nice trick. So let's take a look at the smaller one. Uh, you see here, you have facets on both the cap and the barrel. These do not post. That is just not what they're meant to do. They're meant to be long enough to use unposted. They have a very nice clip here with some scroll work. Sort of uh, a nice swoopy clip. It's a very functional clip. Good spring, not uh, not gonna break. High nose, I don't need your help here, bud. Good spring, you can totally put this on your pocket or your placket of your shirt or however you like to carry these things. You can clip it to papers, whatever. It's got plenty of clearance here and plenty of that. The finial up here, you'll see has the Kaveco logo, logo right there. And you can see that the clip does line up with the writing on the barrel. There is nothing on the bottom here. Uh, it is a little bit of a point, it's not flat but there's nothing adorning it down there. Now, if your pen does not have the clip lining up with the writing on the barrel, you can just unscrew this finial and then you can just move this around, right? So you can put that where it needs to be and then just screw the, screw the finial down and there you go. So if that is out of line and it bothers you, just you know, you can just fix it, very easy. All right, opening this pen up, you can see it's got a little bit of a resistance when you first start twisting it. And that's because it has a nice O-ring down here at the bottom to keep everything snug. There's no inner cap liner or anything like that in this. When you open this, you can actually just see the nib poking through the top, so there's that. Uh, so here is what the pen looks like when it is open. You have these threads down here. There are not very many of them. As you can see, there's a little O-ring right there. It's black on black, so it's hard to notice, but it is there. You have a nice long straight section. It is metal, but it is, um, it is, it's like a, a sort of a matte anodization on this aluminum body. And so it doesn't feel slippery at all to me. I haven't had any problem with that. As you can see, it's a little bit on the matte side. You see right there. Then you have a small nib here. This is the same size nib that you'll find on that Kaveco Sport I was looking at just a second ago. And so uh, if you're used to that size nib, you can totally, you know, keep using that size nib, but in a full size pen, which is kind of nice. This one happens to be an extra fine, but these do come in everything from extra fine up to double broad in both nib sizes, which is pretty great. I, when I buy one of these for myself, I will probably get the double broad 
just because like why not why wouldn't i get a, a marker especially if i get a little tiny nib that's also a marker i don't know that might, might be kind of fun uh, on the back plastic feed uh opening this one up you see it unscrews the barrel there nothing special going on inside the barrel just a bit of aluminum you have a converter this is a converter that i put in here and it is not uh something that comes with the pen you can get a Kaveco converter and the reason i'm twisting it is because these Kaveco converters and these pens are meant to be used with a threaded converter uh right there now i have heard some uh oh we got a little about to make a mess there. there's a little ink bubble i have heard from some folks that sometimes their converters like they've tried converters in them and they can just push them all the way in maybe some of them are skinnier than others i don't know i just when i was playing with these i noticed that there were threads there inside the section and i said oh well that's interesting and so i was trying to push a converter in there and it didn't really want to seat all the way and so i was like well let's drag out a threaded converter i have a few of these around they don't really cost any more than a regular converter you can find them at probably the same shops you'll find the pens at uh and to insert them actually i got a little bit of ink around the, on the edge there let's go ahead and wipe that off and then you just put it in there and uh give it a twist until it feels snug there will probably be a couple of threads left up here at the top and that's okay that's just because different i guess different sections or collars have different heights or something so it's kind of generalized but that is uh nice and snug and you will not have your converter falling out of your pen uh at all like, it's not going to happen right which is pretty nice i like that especially if it's a pen i'm going to throw in my pocket there are some pens out there uh that will like you can jiggle the converter loose not with these that ain't going to happen you don't have to worry about it all right and that's the same in both of these pens so let's set this one aside here i do like the faceted body because it just it can't roll away well i, mean, I guess it could like, you can get it started maybe my desk is kind of uneven though. It, it has a bit of a slope to it. It's not perfect, but it doesn't roll away here at all. So let's take a look at the larger pen. This is the 250 model, which is just a little bit bigger than the other. It's a little bit heavier. Uh, this one is 0.8 ounces and this is one ounce or 24 and 28 grams. It's also a little bit thicker at the barrel. This one is 10 and a half millimeters at the barrel. This one is 11 and a half millimeters at the barrel. So if you like a slightly thicker pen, this is the way to go and you'll have likewise an increase in the section diameter as well when you take this one and open it the outside is the same aside from being slightly larger you can see this uses the larger nib what Kaveco calls the 250 nib and what a lot of us would call a number six nib which is uh, a very nice looking nib and uh it, it it really does protrude from the section there I, when I first got this, I was like, oh, this nib is seated poorly. Nope, that's just how they are. They're just very long coming out of the section, which isn't a problem at all. It just looks a little bit strange if you're used to seeing uh, nibs seat down to about where the nib size marking is there. You can see this one is a fine nib. These are all steel nibs and they feel quite nice. I like them a lot. And you can see that these sections and such are of different lengths. So uh, when they're uncapped, the number six nib is a bit longer, but the section is shorter, which is kind of interesting how they've made this section bit work with the nibs. I uh, I like writing with both of these. I haven't had any problems. They fit my hands just fine. Uh, of course, I'm not writing with both hands. I wish I were ambidextrous, but I am not. I'm a righty. So uh, this hasn't been a problem at all. I can reach the paper just fine with both of them, which is nice. I do like the longer section on the smaller nib because one of the things about small nibs that you may not think about too much is that if you had identically sized sections and everything else you'd have to get way closer to the paper with the smaller nib and that bothers some people it's like I, I don't really love a small nib on a lot of pens because it's harder for me to get to the paper with my big old hands so uh you know that, that your mileage may vary but having these more standardized is uh, very helpful you can see there's only a couple of millimeters difference between these when you have them uh, uncapped, which is pretty nice. You've got uh, 119 millimeters long and 120, about 123 millimeters on this one when they're uncapped. It's like three millimeters. It's not much of a difference. Four, mil uh, four millimeters. Uh, yeah, four millimeters. I can math. It's cool, uh, which is, you know, just not very much of a difference, which is kind of nice. So there you go. There's the outsides of those things. Let's take a look at them next to some other pens. So can I get the right one? Yeah, I can. I actually haven't messed that up. 
Blight um, is putting the wrong cap on the wrong pen. Uh, they are just enough different that I can tell. Also, you can see when I'm screwing these on, I'm kind of going slow at the end. And that's because you can keep rotating just a little bit. That O-ring system will let you do that. But if you stay here, it's plenty snug. It's not going to unscrew itself. Although you could, you know, give it another you know, uh, eighth of a turn or quarter of a turn or something right there. And you could just do that. But I like to line them up. I think it's nice. And I like seeing the facets lined up. It would be nice if they hadn't gone with the O-ring and they just did a hard stop. But I mean, the O-ring works just fine. And I haven't had any problems with that. Oh, one other thing I ought to show you is that the writing on the barrel does not line up with the nib direction. These threads at the section here are single start, which means no matter where you start them, uh, threading them together, this will always be on the same side it, it was before. So when you're holding it, there's no writing up here on the top. It's not, uh, it's not faced that way. It's just, it doesn't work that way. It's down here. My other one is a little bit different. And I don't know if this is random because I only have a sample size of two, but my other one is, is on the other side. So you're not going to see the writing. This doesn't bother me at all. I don't mind not seeing the writing. I think it would bother me more if I could see it and it was like, you know, off center. But since I can't see them at all when I'm writing, I don't really care. So I know that bothers some folks. And so if it does bother you, you'll probably want to get it at a store where you can check that out. But if you're, you know, more like me and you just don't care about that, just like a nice sleek black pen when you're holding it. And then when you cap it, you can match up those facets. And, and I think that's nice. Okay, so let's take a look at it next to some other pens. We'll do a bit of a writing sample with both of these pens and uh, that'll be it. All right, hold on just a sec. Okay, so let's start out here with the uh, 060 and then the 250 next to each other. As you can see, they are not that different from one another, I don't think. Let's throw a couple of other pens in here. We have first the Kaveco Sport which is the small one. I don't have a larger converter or rather a larger, larger Kaveco to sit next to this. I wish I had a, a Supra or something I could put next to it, but I just don't have one. So uh, there's that. We can also throw a uh, Lamy All-Star in here just for grins. You can see the Lamy All-Star is a bit longer. These are a little bit on the short side of normal, but I haven't found it to be a problem. They fit my hands pretty darn well. You can also throw in a uh, Sailor 1911 standard size right there. And uh, on the other side, let's put, uh, let's put this Twisby Eco right there. So pretty normal sizes, really, when it gets right down to it. Then uh, next, let's throw, uh, this is a Lamy 2000 in here. That's kind of a classic pen. And then we got here the Leonardo Memento Zero, the regular one, not the Grande, just the regular old one. So again, on the short side of normal, but perfectly usable. And then lastly, we have a Platinum 3776, and then I'll throw a Diplomat Arrow in here. It's a little bit tough to know exactly what would be helpful to see next to these pens, but there you, there you have it. So let's uh, take some caps off of these and see the writing lengths. So there they are uncapped. Man, that tiny nib looks so small next to the larger nib, doesn't it? Then we have, uh, here's the Lamy 2000, Lamy 2000, and the Lamy All-Star. Right there. And you can see, uncapped, they're not that much different from these other pens and very similar in size to the 2000. And here with the Twisby Eco and then the Platinum 3776, the Platinum 3776 is almost exactly the same size as these two. And here, Kaveco Sport, a bit longer than the originals once you have uncapped it. And then the Sailor 1911 Standard is almost exactly the same as this one, a little bit shorter than here. There so you have the Diplomat and the Leonardo. And as uh, with all the rest, once uncapped, more or less the same length you would be writing with with these other pens. So if the size is something you are concerned about, I would say don't worry about that too much. It's a good size. Okay, let's have our uh, writing sample here. I'm using, a, this is just a little Kikuyo soft ring notebook just to give you an idea of how these write. And I'll leave the stats up here because we'll just talk about those here in a little bit. All right, so this is the Kaveco original. This is the EF nib. This is a, a Robert Oster ink that was made with uh, gallon leather called Admiral Blue. It's actually a very nice blue and it's got decent flow. This nib is an extra fine and it's a little bit finer than I'm used to writing with, but it writes just fine. Maybe a little bit on the dry side, I suppose, but again, it's pretty fine, so that's not a huge surprise. 
Also, it had a little bit of a hard start here, but that's just because it was sitting in the tray there doing comparisons for uh, several minutes. So not a big surprise. Let's try the larger nib here. And again, writes very well. A little bit of hesitation there, but that's really just because it was sitting there open, exposed to the air, and it started up again very quickly. I haven't had any problems with these starting up when I wanted them to. They have had excellent flow and behavior the whole time I've had them, which has been a little while now. So yeah, these are quite nice. And as you can see, no real line variation, but that's not surprising. These are round tipped nibs but they write very nicely. <laughs> I don't love the way my writing looks with the extra fine, but that's just because I'm not used to using an extra fine. That's that's on me. I wouldn't blame the pen for that at all. I'm just not used to it. Even fine, like fine is as fine as I usually go. So, you know, that's on me, but I have enjoyed writing with both of these and it's gonna be nice to, to pass these on. Just some stat stuff before we get out of here. Anodized aluminum, matte finish here. I haven't seen any evidence of it getting shiny or being scratched. And I have just been kind of throwing these in my pockets because I wanted to see how they worked and they've worked very well. Uh, nibs, all steel, extra fine through double broad, both nib size. Sizes. Filling system, standard international cartridge, or get yourself a threaded converter, I think, for these. They are pretty widely available. Just I, I would go with that. I know some people have had luck putting a regular converter in there, but mine wanted threaded, and some other folks I've looked at wanted threaded, and the Kaveco site says that their Kaveco converters to these are threaded. So uh, there you go. It would have been nice if they had included that, but uh, that doesn't happen a lot in the European market, and so I'm not surprised they left them out. The capped and uncapped weights are here as you can see in both grams and ounces a very nice weight a little bit of weight to them because they are metal but they don't feel heavy at all i haven't had any problems using these for longer writing sessions the lengths as you can see the same until you uh until you uncap them but everything else is the same section diameters and barrel diameters are about a millimeter different on each one which is to be expected because they just kind of scaled it up and the price is a little bit higher for the larger pen with the larger nib but at 105 and 120 i feel like that is pretty in line with the other things you're looking at from kaveco and other things sort of in this genre. The metal versions of the Kaveco Sport are in the like $70 to $100 range or so, and so this doesn't seem out of line at all. So there you go. That has been the Kaveco Original. Check down in the description if you are viewing this early on in its life cycle, and uh, you can enter to win one of these two pens. And uh, that's it. Let me know what you think about these pens in the comments. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you aren't subscribed. And, uh, you know, check me out in another video later on. Peace out.